Hey everybody, welcome to Sid's Little Corner of the Internet. We've got a third party Transformers review for you. This time around we're going to be taking a look at the Fans Toys FT25 Outrider. This is their take on a Masterpiece Trailbreaker. And I do have to say on a personal note, this is the first Fans Toys figure I have ever purchased. As a matter of fact, it's the first one I've ever held in my hands. So over the last few years I've been getting a little bit more into the third party market. Uh, I've been collecting Transformers all my life, but most of the time it's been mainline. So uh, I'm really excited to bring this to you today. I wanted to share this experience with you as uh, I've heard all the hype about fans toys, but I've never really had a chance to have one. So let's go ahead and jump into it and we'll start as we always do with that packaging. And uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. I didn't know what to expect, but uh, there it is. It's uh, Outrider and you have that grid pattern. And if you look closely, you can see Outrider, aka Trailbreaker, uh, in that grid pattern and you can also see me a little bit and then you have whatever that says right there i can only assume it's outrider it is made in china you have outrider on the side of the box and then on the back you have outrider as well and then here's something that's kind of odd i'm going to pause this or i'm going to hold it still so you guys can pause it and then read that but this is a bio for fans toys tesla which is their take on perceptor kind of weird i would have Thought that it would be the one for Trailbreaker or Outrider, but anyway. And then you've got some warnings down there. Uh, no sad baby anywhere on this box because third-party companies don't care about care about sad babies or choking. But you can see he also has his alt mode right in there as well. And then on the bottom, you have Outrider. So kind of interesting packaging, a little different than what we normally see. But let's go ahead and uh, see what see what came inside that box with Outrider himself. Behold, laid out here before you is everything that came inside that box with Outrider. And we'll start over here with this little sheet of instructions, or it's not exactly little. But I will say that uh, these instructions are very well done. They're clear and concise. I do like the graphics that they used. So kudos to them on that. Very well done. And the next thing we'll take a look at here is that other eccentricity. We talked about the box with the Tesla bio on it. Let's go ahead and look at his bio card. So you guys tell me, am I crazy? This says Outrider, and that's a picture of Outrider, a.k.a. Trailbreaker. And you flip it over, and it says Outrider, and that's a picture of Outrider, and that's a picture of Outrider, and there's his stats, but now when you take a look here, and I'm going to try and hold it as still as possible so you guys can pause at home and take a look at that. This is a bio for Rig, which is their take on Huffer. So I'm not sure what's going on there. The box has a bio for Tesla, their take on Perceptor. This has a bio for Rig, their take on Huffer. Where's his bio? Uh, I don't know. It's very strange. Anyway, uh, still very nice quality. This feels like plastic, not cardboard. So nice shine on it. Very well done. And that leaves us with what we see here. So let's go ahead and start right up here at the very front. You do get three faces. And he, of course, well, four faces because he comes with that face and that's, you know, his, I don't know, almost a smiley face. And then you get this face, which is his stern face, I guess. And then you get his other stern face. What's the difference, you may ask? Well, that's a really good question. Uh, let's take a look. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know what the difference is. I really don't. If you see a difference, let me know. But uh, I don't. I don't really see it. So, anyway, he comes with those two faces. I guess maybe one of them is a spare in case you lose his stern face and he needs to stay stern. And then he comes with his yelly face. I like his yelly face. This works. So let me see if I can actually hold that so you guys can see it. But yeah, that's a good yelly face right there. He looks good wearing the yelly face. And the face replacement is pretty simple. You flip the head up. You got a little port under there. You stick that in. And Bob's your uncle. You're good to go. All right. So then moving on to the next accessory, we're going to take a look at his hand. And while we're at this hand, I'm going to cover the hand articulation. So that way we have all that covered. Uh, this is his left hand. It replaces his little hose back there. You do have to use a screwdriver and you have to take that hose off in order to replace the hand. So it's not, it's not difficult by any means, but it's not a simple matter of just uh, sliding something off, sliding something else on. But as far as the details on the hands go, uh, I mean, it's just a matte black plastic, but it looks very well done. This is a high quality plastic for sure. 
Each of the fingers is individually articulated. So taking a look at this thumb first, you've got that ball joint right there. So you can move that around. You can twist it any direction you want to go. And then you have this pin right here. So you can take that as far back as you want and then bring it that far forward. So um, possibilities are almost endless here for the thumb. And then the fingers being individually articulated, you have two pins in each of these spots right here. So you can move his finger there. You can move his finger there and then do what you need to do. And then each of those is the same. So, you know, if you rock and roll, want to do something like that, you can, you can totally pull that off. All right. And then you have wrist rotation. So you can see that mushroom joint that's in there. So you can rotate on that wrist and yeah, pretty much get this guy in uh, all kinds of nice hand motions, whether they be obscene or clean or whatever you want to do. All right, so there is the hand. Now that brings us down to the last two items. So let's take a look at his pistol. This is simple, but man, is it pretty. This is a uh, I, I, almost like a silk feel to this thing. The, the, the paint that's on this, it just feels so good. So it's nice and smooth, looks very well done. The sculpt work on there is nice. Got a little bit of a whatever that is on the end, but I'm not sure if that's supposed to be sculpted in or if that was some kind of a molding error, but everything else looks really good on this. You, you don't even really, I mean, unless you're looking for the molding imperfections, you don't really even find them in there. So yeah, this thing looks great. Would have been nice to have had a blast effect, but I say that every time. So then the last thing that you have here, this is his radar dish that's mounted when he's in his vehicle mode. And goodness gracious, this thing is chromey. It is pretty, it's cool. Uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a shame I'm only going to be able to use it in the vehicle mode uh, as far as I can tell if I can use it in the bot mode let me know but I, I don't see anywhere that I could but yeah so you have this thing it's articulated there so you can if you have it mounted you move it up move it down so on and so forth and then it's also on a rotate and we'll see that in the vehicle mode as well because it's just easier to rotate when it's on the vehicle than it is with my thumb holding it because everything is really tight on this and that's not a complaint so yeah, looks good. Uh, this is just plastic with the chrome plating and then kind of that matte silver finish here. It looks very similar to the same silver finish that they used for his gun. So there you go. But yeah, this thing's really cool. I like it. And uh, that leaves us with what we see here. This is the uh, Outrider. And why do I have him in this position? Well, a couple of reasons. Number one, it helped me get everything in the frame a little bit easier than if he was standing up because he is a pretty tall boy. And secondly, because, hey, why not? Uh, you know, when's the last time, uh, it's not quite crisscross applesauce, but when's the last time you've seen a bot sit like that? So anyway, let's go ahead and we're going to dig into his details and articulation now and see what he has to offer. Here he is, the bot we've all been waiting to see. This is the Fans Toys Outrider, aka Trailbreaker. So let's go ahead and bring him in and start taking a look at those details. We'll start as we always do with that head sculpt. And yeah, that's a good head sculpt. We saw the faces earlier, so this is one of the four faces that he comes with. It's kind of his smirky face, I guess is what you would call it. So it is a G1 simplistic style design that they're going for here, so you're not going to find a lot of nooks and crannies and sculpted detail in there because it's supposed to look kind of like the cartoon. So, And I think they pull that off really well. He, I can almost hear his voice right now. So yeah, that looks really good. And then while we're up here, let's take a look at his little force field generator. So it's all chromed out, looks great. So you've got, I believe this piece here is plastic, but this arm is die cast. And then over here you have his shoulder mounted cannon. And then this is all plastic right here, but all chromed out, looking really good, sitting on a ball joint back here. So yeah, that looks really nice. And then nothing really to speak of as far as the top of the head or the top of the uh, upper body goes. And then coming down here to that chest, this is an all die cast hood. So this is very, uh, very heavy, very solid. Uh, feels really good. Uh, paint looks great on it. Of course, you got that windshield back there with that translucent blue plastic. And then coming down, not a lot to see as far as the waist or the crotch goes. And then down here in those upper thighs, you get those whites and you get those reds. And you do get a little bit of sculpted detail going on down here, which is nice. Breaks up the monotony. And then on the insides of the legs, that's where all the screws are located. Doesn't look bad by any means, but that's where they, those are. And then you've got those good looking shins coming down to those feet. 
He's nice and solid. Uh, he doesn't have much of a heel to speak of, really, but he doesn't act like he's top-heavy. He's really easy to pose, so no complaints there. You can see all these seams where everything comes together. It all fits nice and tight, so good tight tolerances on this guy. Coming up the side, let me get this arm out of the way best I can. Coming up the side, those thighs look good. You can see that he has filled in all the gaps underneath. So he's not hollow. You're not going to see through this guy. So that's really helpful. Looking at the arms themselves. Now we already looked at the hand, the left hand, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the right hand over here. But looking at his nozzle or his weapon over here on this hand, that's all chromed out. Looks good. All that upper arm and the forearm. There's the inside of the arms. Up underneath. You've got a little bit going on there. That's the panel for the transformation. And then you've got the door panel right there. And you do have this mirror. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about these mirrors when we get to the articulation. But uh, just note that they are there. Those are the mirrors for the vehicle mode. And then taking a look at him from the back. Looks pretty good. No complaints whatsoever. I mean, I guess if you really wanted to pick on something, it's this tailgate area right here. It sticks out. It juts out a little bit. But... If you squint, it almost looks like a utility belt, and that's what I'm going to go with, because why not? And then you've got this little area right here. This flips 180 degrees, so this isn't completely smooth, but, you know, if that's the worst he's going to look from the backside, I have no complaints, guys. I mean, we've seen some pretty hideous backsides of bots before, and this is not one of them for sure. So, yeah, looking good all the way around. And then you've got that back area. Even this comes together, looks pretty good. And then just for fun, there's the bottoms of the feet. Okay, now let's set him back down. Now we're going to talk about the articulation. Before I get into the articulation with this guy, I want to talk about a couple things. Number one, his joints are nice and tight, I guess as you would expect from fans toys. But there are a few places on this figure where you need to be careful with the geometry. You need to worry and watch out for the interference make sure you don't break things just be super careful with them until you get used to this figure so let's go ahead and get into that geometry and i'll walk you through that a little bit so starting up here with the head you're not going to get a lot as far as the articulation goes with the head i guess i would have liked to have seen a little bit more and i need to push that head down just a little bit more that's uh this tab down here is just really tight where the head rests so you kind of got to give that a nice push and keep it in it, it wants to pop out, but once you get it in there, it stays until you start playing with the head. So once I start playing with the head, it's going to pop out again. It is what it is. But before I start with the head, actually, let's start with that force field generator. Yeah, you can move that forward until he bumps into his head. You can move it back that far, and then you have this amount of movement as far as this hinge right here goes. And I'm just going to keep that back to keep it out of the head's way. And I am going to go ahead and move this back now. So you can take it back that far. You can see kind of where that hard stop is right there. And then this is on a ball joint. This is plastic on plastic ball joint, and it's chrome. So I'm not going to move it a lot. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm going to be very judicious with it. Uh, just moving forward, this is uh, one of the concerned areas that I have as far as rubbing paint off and maybe eventually getting loose. But right now, you can hear it. I mean, that thing is nice and tight. So... You do get a good range of motion. You can turn it all the way around 180 degrees if you want to do so. And then all this tucks away nicely in his alt mode. Now, going to this head, you do get a little bit of down. You get a little bit of up. And then I just pop that loose. So a little bit down, a little bit of up. A little bit of side to side. So not a tremendous amount. And then, of course, you can take that head all the way around. So it would have been nice to have gotten a little bit more out of this guy uh, in, in uh, the head motion area. But it's still enough that you're going to be able to do some stuff with him. Now, coming to these shoulders. These shoulders are funky. I want to spend a little bit of time on them, and I want to talk about it. So I'm actually going to turn him around to the backside for a second. I'm going to show you these mirrors. So these mirrors are going to give you a little bit of pain. Nothing major, but just be careful. Because the way these shoulders work, when you raise these shoulders up, you can see there you're starting to get a little bit of a geometry interference. So you need to be wary of that because of the way these shoulders work. Okay, now what you could do is you could tuck these mirrors away and then fold that in, but then they start interfering in other places. But if you tuck them in, 
you don't get that interference in the back. So I guess a little bit of advanced planning, knowing what you're going to do as far as posing, that kind of stuff is going to go a long way for you. So just something to be aware of there. But as far as those shoulders go, the shoulders, they can come up that far and basically smack him in the face. And then they can come down that far. No butterfly to speak of. This is really just, I don't want to call it slop because it's not slop, but this is just a little bit of play. And then you, you've got those ratcheted joints right there, and then you can take those all the way around. All right, just be careful with those mirrors. All right, and then moving on down to the elbows, you do get well over 90 degrees on those elbows just on that single joint. And then you get bicep rotation. You can take that all the way around as well. All right, so I'm gonna get this shoulder out of the way. I'm gonna get this shoulder out of the way so that way we can focus on this waist. So in the waist, you do get waist rotation. You can go all the way around. And then you do have an ab crunch as well. So getting that ab crunch loose, it's a nice tight connection. And then you can get that far down with the ab crunch. Now, I will tell you, there's a lot of mass here. There's a lot of weight here. I don't think that this pin is going to be strong enough to hold this guy if you want to try to pose him like this. As a matter of fact, if I let him go right now, maybe I'm going to get lucky, but it's probably not going to take much, you know, to, yeah. So it, it's just kind of hanging on by a prayer there. So you can use this for your posing. Just be aware that it's probably not going to hold his weight very well. So, but you do get that far down. All right, and then push that back in. And then it's, once it's locked in place, it's, it's not going anywhere. I mean, he's solid. All right, coming on down to those hips. On the splits, you get a full split on this guy. You're not gonna get a Van Dam, but you are gonna get a full split. He does have a hard stop right there. This is gonna be our second area of ge geometric interference. So something to note, you do have this thigh rotation here, so you can bring the thigh rotation out that far. And then you bring the thigh rotation in when he's straight on his leg, you can only go this far. However, if you bring this out, because you notice that hip skirt doesn't come with it, now you can get a little bit more as far as that thigh rotation inwards. So just be careful with this. Know where you're going with it. Don't crank on him too hard. Learn to play with him a little bit before you start going for some of those more exotic poses. All right, as far as kicking forward goes, he will kick forward that far, which is pretty significant. Unfortunately, kicking backward, you get about that much. He just starts running into himself. So again, it's a situation of geometry you could maybe get a little bit more if you swing that leg out but it's nothing that's going to really benefit you so you get basically one click back on on that back kick which more often than not is good enough just be careful don't rub your paint off All right and then we already talked about that thigh rotation so then down here at the knees same thing as the elbows it's just one single joint but it is nice and deep so you get well over 90 degrees on that on that knee and then down here at the feet you get ankle tilt out ankle tilt in and then just the ever little bit of up and down so it's not going to be a great amount now one thing that you can do one thing i have done to take advantage of this is for transformation you pull this out and this keeps the toe locked in place but you can actually use that and you can get that toe out of the way so if you're going to put him in some kind of a kneel something like this then that toe gets out of your way Okay, so overall articulation, I think, is pretty well done on this guy. There are some limitations, and you do have a few geometric areas to worry about as far as interference. But nothing you can't get past uh, in order to get this guy in some great poses. Just a little bit of advanced planning and a little bit of careful motion as far as this goes. This is not a kid's toy. We all know it. This is an adult collector toy. So treat it as such and you'll be fine all right so what we'll do now is we will bring some of those accessories in and we'll throw some stuff on him and see how he looks with some of his different accessories so here he is all accessorized up and i i know it doesn't look like much it's kind of subtle uh but a, just a couple of the differences here number one is he now has a left hand instead of the hose accessory uh, he's also holding his pistol in his right hand and then he's got his screamy face on. So, you know, he's he's down on his knees. He's he's injured or he's, uh, you know, kind of grieving a fallen teammate and firing in revenge at whoever may have done it. Uh, take your pick, whatever you want to do there. But uh, I took an opportunity to not only talk about those 
three accessories uh, that he's using right now, but also to give you an idea of what you can do as far as posability. I'm not a master poser when it comes to figures, but I tried to take advantage here of everything that they had to offer up to and including the ab crunch right there. So you can see you can get him in some pretty cool positions. So yeah, he's all accessorized up there. I hope that uh, kind of brings it across the things that you can do with Outrider. Uh, so now that we've got all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into those comparisons. We'll get him into his alt mode. Uh, well, not comparisons, sorry. We're going to get him into his alt mode. We'll take a look at him there first, and then we will get into those comparisons. All right, so I know that I said that we were going to get into those comparisons, but real quick before we do, there's something important that I do want to cover on this figure. Uh, and it's not the fact that you can put him in a really cool Frankenstein pose, because you totally can. I mean, he's pulling it off. But I got these arms up out of the way because I want to focus on something in the legs. Transformation on this guy is pretty easy. Follow the instructions in the booklet. You're going to be completely fine. But there is a tricky point there. There's something that is a little worrisome that I want to point out. When you transform him, uh, not necessarily to his alt mode, but when you're going back from the alt mode to his bot mode, there's something I want you to watch for and be really careful. And it's with the wheels tucked away in the legs right here. So... What I want to show you is you have this wheel assembly inside this leg. And if you just open this panel up right here, you can see what's going on. So you've got that wheel tucked away in there. The legs themselves, as far as transformation goes, there's not a lot to them. But one of the things you have to do is you have to flip this wheel out. And if you notice, you've got this little pin right there. You've got this little tab right there. And then when you flip this out, these are held by friction. And you swing these out 180 degrees, you tuck all this stuff away, and then you're pretty much set. Flip this leg up right here, and then you're pretty, you're pretty much set, and you're done with the legs. The problem comes when you want to transform him back. So if you have this, and I'm not going to do it because I'm going to do it as few times as I have to on this figure. When you have him transformed in his alt mode, and you have this wheel that's pushed out all the way, and it's sitting there even, there's no good way to get this wheel and grab it and bring it back in and tuck it away right there the way it should. You're gonna torque on this axle right there. You're gonna torque on that little piece holding the wheel onto this little sub-assembly right there. There's just no two ways about it and it takes a lot of torque. It is very worrisome. So when you've got him out here, I'll push a little bit and I mean you can see just by how much pressure I'm putting on my fingers and I still don't have this pushed all the way out where it should be. So just imagine when I'm bringing it back how much pressure I need to put. And even right now, that's significant. So I'm just going to let you hear this. Just how much it takes just to break it from there. And that's not even fully set in the slot. So if you have it right there, you're still not sitting even. So you have to take this even further over. So when you're bringing him back to his alt mode, be, or his robot mode from his alt mode. Be super careful with this. I don't want you to break these wheels off. I'm, I, I don't even know if they would break. I mean, this looks like it's, it's a nice metal pin in there, but my gosh, so much pressure it takes to bring this wheel and tuck it back in where it belongs. So just something to keep in mind, uh, something I want to give you guys a heads up on. I don't want you to find out the hard way about that pin, all right? So now that we've got that out of the way, uh, Frankenrider is going to get transformed into his alt mode, and we'll take a look at him from there. Well, everybody, here he is in his alt mode. And, man, I've got to tell you, I hope it's coming across on camera, but in hand, in person, looking at this guy right now, he looks fantastic. This is such a good-looking alt mode. Uh, you know, the, the rubber tires, the, the paint on there that has just a little bit of a hint of that pearlescent, almost like a glitter style all the chrome the windows everything looks really good here uh, the fact that he's almost completely solid underneath as well so uh, unless you really know what you're looking for you're not really seeing any robot kibble under there this guy just fits the part this is trail breaker through and through for me i i really enjoy what they've done here now i'm going to take him off the pedal still here shortly but just a couple things i do want to point out is uh, of course you do have his radar dish accessory there uh, that you can plug in and it plugs in pretty securely. I do want to point out that this takes a lot of advanced planning. So 
when you get him into his alt mode, you're going to want to know whether or not you want this on. The reason being is because there's this little panel up here that flips 180 degrees. So the one side is smooth, kind of matches the body. The other side, and I'll take this off here in a second, and I'll show you the other side has some uh, slots in it or some, uh, some holes in it that you can plug this in. So uh, if you're not going to use it, you're going to want the other side so he's nice and smooth and streamlined. But if you are going to use it, uh, you're going to want this side up. But you're going to want to know that before you transform him into his alt mode because if you, if you decide to change your mind, um, you basically have to completely undo everything that you've done for the alt mode transformation in order to have enough room to flip this panel 180 degrees. So that's just something to keep in mind. Additionally, you do have access. I'm not going to do it because I think that it's, it's too tight of a fit. There's too much of a tolerance issue there. But you do have access and the ability. You can lift this panel up right here. You can bring this panel and lift it up this way. And you can get access to his force shield generator and to his uh, shoulder mounted uh, weapon. Uh, and you can bring those out as well if you want to have them on either side. Uh, it makes me a little nervous. Uh, it, it, this guy is just too much of a financial investment for me to want to bend and stretch and pull and twist too hard on things. So uh, I'm going to keep those weapons tucked away. Uh, just know that that is an option if you choose to go that way. But let's go ahead and we're going to take him off that pedestal for a second. And I just want to show a couple of things. Let me move that on out of the way. So as far as the underside, we'll start there. Uh, you can see he comes together really well. So you do have the under the vehicle storage. This is nice and elegant. Uh, it just plugs into these two slots right over here and you can get those uh, plugged in nice and neat and then get those legs tucked away and then you have your weapon put away and it is completely nondescript so that's really nice. Uh, additionally as we were saying for the radar dish you can just take this and it takes a little bit of effort to get it out but then you get those tabs and then you have those slots and then this is the panel that I was talking about right here so this flips 180 degrees and if you want to flip this, in order to do that, you need to undo the legs, basically completely disassemble dis, uh, the cab from the leg assembly. Then you need to pull the arms out, which are tucked away inside these doors, and flip that around. So you're, you're making a lot of work for yourself, so it's better to just know going in uh, if you want to do that. Now, I'm going to open this up just a little bit, but I'm not going to pull those weapons out. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about here. So you do have, and as you would expect from fans, fans Toys, this is very tight. So you do have that ability where you can reach those weapons in there if you choose to do so. But I'm not going to go any further than this. Now, you can on your copy, but I will not be doing that on mine. So uh, as far as rolling goes, he does roll really well. And of course, he has that nice chrome and he has all these translucent plastic areas for those tail lights and for the side markers, turn signals, that kind of stuff. And just good detail all the way around. So I very much do enjoy this alt mode. I think he looks really good in this mode. I think he pulls it off very well. So what we'll do now is we'll go ahead and we'll get into some, comp some comparisons and we'll see how he looks next to some other figures I have in my collection. For our first alt mode comparison, here we see the Outrider next to MP10 Optimus Prime. And I don't think the scale is quite perfect here. It's pretty close in vehicle mode, uh, but I don't think it's quite there. I think that either Optimus should be just a tick bigger or Outrider slash Trailbreaker should be a little bit smaller. But they do look really good together. Uh, they both uh, have those chrome bumpers, so they're the chrome bumper brothers. But um, I'm going to turn Optimus here just a little bit and maybe bring him to the side. So you can see that point of comparison as well. So you can see, I think, he, he, Outrider is just a little too big uh, for the scale, but they still look pretty darn good together. Moving right along to our next comparison. Unfortunately, I do not have a G1 Trailbreaker in my collection. That's just one of those figures that I was never able to get my hands on. So in his absence, uh, I'm going to use my G1 Optimus Prime so you can get a sense of scale there between the third-party Masterpiece scale and the original G1. So you can see Outrider's got a little bit of size on him. And for our final alt mode comparison, this is the Transformers War for Cybertron Earthrise 
trail breaker. So we'll spend a little bit of time here doing a compare and contrast uh, because I think that, uh, you know, other than a few glaring engineering issues on this guy, mostly with the way those front arms transform and tuck away, I think he's a pretty good representation of trail breaker. And, uh, uh, overall, I think he's a good bot. So let's go ahead and take a look at these guys real quick. So this is the, that front view where you can kind of see the front three quarters of both of them. Here we see them in that rear three quarters view. Here they are head to head. Here we see them back to back. And finally, here we see them both coming right at us to run us over. That'll do it for the alt mode comparison. So let's go ahead and get him back into his bot mode. We'll do some comparisons there. For our first bot mode comparison, here you see the Fans Toys Outrider next to the MP10 Optimus Prime. And from a scale standpoint, yeah, I think this definitely works really well in bot mode, uh, better than it does in vehicle mode. These two guys look really good together. So there you go. As I mentioned in the alt mode comparison section, I do not unfortunately have a G1 trail breaker. So I'm using my G1 Optimus Prime here as a point of comparison. So you can see how this uh, Fans Toys MP scaled figure uh, compares next to the, the, the original G1 line. And just for fun, I thought I would do a little uh, bot mode compare and contrast here between two third party brands. Uh, the figure on the right here, this is the x Transbots Jansen. This is their take on a Masterpiece Perceptor. So the direct Fans Toys correlation would be the Fans Toys Tesla. I do not have the Fans Toys Tesla, so uh, here's the Fans Toys Outrider, of course. And I uh, just wanted to bring these two guys in just to show you from a scale standpoint. I think they scale up pretty well together. And the one thing I'm going to give both of these third-party companies is there's a lot of die cast here and an overall good quality feel but I'm definitely giving the edge to the fans toys just in that overall fit, finish, and quality. This is a great figure, don't get me wrong, uh, but he feels maybe just a little overcomplicated, a little over-engineered, and maybe slightly uh, worse on the tolerances as far as the quality goes than this fans toys figure right here. So, But I thought I'd bring these two guys in uh, really for that and also because they actually just look pretty darn good together. And for our final individual bot mode comparison, this is the Transformers War for Cybertron Earthrise Trailbreaker. And yeah, to be fair, this really isn't a comparison. This is apples and oranges. Uh, you know, we're talking a huge difference in engineering price. Of course, this is going to be the superior figure, uh, but he's the inspiration, right? This is Trailbreaker. This is who Outrider is based on. So I wanted to bring him in. We took a look at him in the vehicle modes. Uh, I think the vehicle modes are a little closer than the bot modes are. Uh, obviously, you see the shortcomings here in order to make this a uh, what, what you would call an affordable mainline figure. Uh, but it's still kind of cool to see these two guys together and see where that inspiration came from. So uh, there you go. And for our final overall comparison, just wanted to bring in a couple of masterpiece figures that uh, don't get a lot of screen time and I don't have the opportunity to get off the shelf too much. So here we see Outrider, aka Trailbreaker, in the middle, and he's sandwiched between the Masterpiece Inferno and Masterpiece Nemesis Prime. So the Masterpiece Nemesis Prime, for those who may not know, this is the MP44 Optimus Prime mold. This is just the MP49 nemesis prime release so you can see uh outrider he just he fits right in he just blends right in looks fantastic with uh, any other masterpiece figures that you might have in your collection all right that's going to do it for the comparisons so let's go ahead and get into those final thoughts as i mentioned earlier in the review this is my first foray into the fans toys universe this is the first uh, fans toys figure that i've ever purchased it's the first one i've ever even held in my hand so I have a lot to say. I'm going to try to get through it as quickly as possible so this doesn't drone on and on, but I will tell you in short that I do think that for the most part the Fans Toys figures live up to the hype if Outrider here is any indication as to what you can expect from that. So let's go ahead and jump into that real quick and we'll start with our first bullet point which is the overall aesthetic. The overall look of this figure 
in both modes is fantastic. He he looks great in his bot mode. He looks fantastic in his alt mode. Uh, is he 100% tune accurate? No, not 100%, but he definitely gets the job done. And he has an absolutely fantastic shelf presence. Uh, he he is he's beautiful. You know, the, just the way that he comes together, I'm really impressed by that in both modes. My my preferred mode, of course, is the bot mode, but the alt mode is outstanding as well. I mean, it's heavy, it's solid. Uh, unless you know what you're looking for, you don't see the robot mode. It just it just disappears. The robot disappears in there. So overall aesthetic, I'm going to give this guy a 10 out of 10. I have no complaints with this guy whatsoever. He just looks gorgeous. Uh, articulation. Um, articulation is very well done. There's just a few little things that I would have like to have uh, seen a little bit better, uh, particularly I would have liked to have had a little bit more motion in that head, just every axis, left, right, up, down, side to side. It would have been nice to have a little bit more motion than what we got. So it's nothing major, but, uh, you know, I mean, for a figure at this price point, I would have liked to have had more. Uh, as, as far as the shoulders go, uh, as I mentioned earlier, they're, they're kind of funky, the way that you need to pose them, just the way that they're configured. You can get through it, but it takes a little bit as far as posing goes. Ultimately, it doesn't uh, detract from the posing of the figure. It's just something that you're going to need to get used to. And I would have liked to have had more up and down in those feet. So your ankle tilt is, is more than enough. You're not going to have any issues there. But just the up and down of the feet, it would have been nice to have had a little bit more motion there. The one nice thing that I will say as far as the feet goes is you do have the ability, as you can see on the right leg back there, to tilt those front toes down. So you've got this little assembly back here that if you disconnect that from the toe, then it allows you to, to bend those toes down, which would let you utilize a position like this, kind of that kneeling position and get those toes out of the way. So that is definitely helpful. On the plus side, uh, you know, you get an ab crunch. I would expect an ab crunch for a figure at this price point, but it's always something worth mentioning that you do have it and it's great to have. Uh, the elbows and the knees, they're not double jointed, which is a little surprising, but they're nice and deep. You're not going to have any issues here as far as that goes. So I was actually surprised uh, just how well the knees and the elbows get the job done. Uh, just being on those single joints. So articulation, I'm going to give this guy a 9 out of 10. Moving on to the accessories. They're not bad by any means. The accessories that you get are high quality. They feel good. They look good. There's, there's no imperfections on them. They're beautiful. I just wish there was more. For a figure at this price point, uh, I, 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 I guess that's the best way that I can describe it, is it left me wanting for more. Uh, I think for for what you pay for this figure, getting some extra faces, getting a radar dish, getting a gun, you know, getting another hand, cool, that's great. But where's all the other really cool stuff for a figure this price? Uh, that's my biggest issue, and maybe that's not fair to say that, but that's just kind of the way I feel about it. Um, it would have been nice if Fans Toys would start adopting what Hasbro and Takara has been doing lately and adding blast effects to their masterpiece figures as well, because it would have been really cool to have had some kind of an effect coming out of his, uh, you know, his hose right here or out of the gun or the shoulder mounted cannon, something uh, that would have added to that. So the accessories, they're not as strong as I think they could have been. The, the ones you get are very nice. I just don't think it's enough. I'm giving him an 8 out of 10. Moving on to quality. I really don't have any complaints as far as quality goes on the figure itself. The uh, sculpt work is nice. There are no molding defects. Paint looks fabulous. Um, no really complaints. All the joints are nice and tight. Transformation works well. If I had to pick on anything as far as quality on the figure goes, it would be the right thigh is a little looser than the left thigh. Not by any means to be the, to the point of detrimental uh, here. I'm just trying to pick. I'm trying to find something guys, so work with me. So the right thigh is a little bit loose and tabbing the head into the upper body, it's a little tighter than what I would have liked to have had to push on it. It makes me a little nervous pushing as hard as I have to, but everything else, man, it just feels good. It looks good. All of it's great. Uh, so overall quality on the figure is almost perfect. Uh, I, I guess my questions lie really in, as we sh had seen earlier in the review, the box and the bio card. Why do we have a biography for Tesla on the box and a bio for Rig on the bio card? This is Outrider. I would have expected to have seen his information on those. So just kind of peculiar there. I don't know if I'm going to call it a, call it a quality issue, but it's just a 
eccentricity. Uh, you guys let me know if the, maybe that's a fan's toys thing. Maybe they do that with all their figures. Uh, but overall quality on the figure, uh, it's spot on. I'm going to give him a 9 out of 10. So that takes us to our last bullet, which is overall value. Th this is the one where I struggled the most. The I recognize the fact that the fan's toys company they're making some of the best figures on the market right now i i've seen the hype i I've, I've held this guy in my hand now i get it he looks good he feels good the quality is there the the uh, looks are there i just don't know if he's worth what the price point is uh i i think i would have been a little more comfortable uh and i would have rated this guy higher if he was about 30 or 40 us dollars less than what the purchase price is so I picked this guy up from TF Source for 190 US dollars. That's pretty salty. That's a big investment. That's not something that you take lightly. And frankly, although I love this figure, I don't know if this is a 190 US dollar figure. This feels more like a $150 figure to me. Uh, I just, I don't know. $190 is stretching it there. It, it, it really, hmm. I don't know. Is it going to be enough to dissuade people from picking it up? Obviously not. If they're if they're a Fans Toys fan or Trailbreaker or Masterpiece or if they have the means, they're going to pick this guy up. But I do think that that $190 price point is going to turn a lot of people off. So for me personally, uh, it, it was it was something that I thought about for a little bit before I ultimately decided to pick him up. I don't regret picking him up at that price point, uh, but I sure would have hesitated a lot less if he was about $150 instead of $190. So overall value, I'm going to ding him a little bit here just simply because as a figure, I don't know if he's worth that price point of $190. So I'm going to give him a 7 out of 10 on overall value. So that brings us to a grand total out of a possible 50 points. The Fans Toys Outrider gets 43 out of 50, which puts him at 86%. Uh, that makes this guy an easy recommend for me if you have the means. I, I will say that caveat. Again, my biggest issue with this figure is the cost. I, I I will have to say that, you know, if you're stretching and $190 is at the top of your uh, price point list here, then, then maybe skip him. But if you have the means, you're absolutely going to love this guy. So with that, that's going to wrap the review up. I hope you guys got some good information out of here. I, I hope you're entertained. And if you haven't already done so, be sure to hit the like button. Be sure to subscribe and leave some comments. Let me know what you think. Uh, Appreciate all the support that you guys are giving. So until we see you guys in the next one, take care.